Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. We're glad you're here. So today we're gonna have a look at one of my recent acquisitions, or maybe actually two of my recent acquisitions. Before you are two beautiful Panasonic KX P2123 color printers. And what we're going to look at today is printing from these with various applications, as well as some of the settings and features of these printers. And then from there, we'll go ahead and wrap things up. But in all cases, I hope you enjoy it. And without further ado, let's have a look. So here's a spec sheet that I found online, which does a really nice job covering this 24 pin color printer. Great resolution at 360 by 360 DPI, all of the built-in fonts, as well as the different ways to feed paper, all of these things that we will be looking at today. And another thing I like about this printer is it has software emulation for both the Epson LQ860 and IBM ProPrinter X24E, which will be important as we look at some of the applications today later in the video. And here you see it, here it is, the printer, as well as the original box that it came in, and we'll be looking at each of the components that you saw here in just a minute. Here's the box if you want to see what the front of it looks like. Always cool to have artifacts like this laying around. And here is a close-up of the front panel of the printer. You can see there are a lot of functions for this printer. I don't use all of them and we won't cover all of them today, but we'll certainly go through a lot of the different functions here so that you can get a feel for the different types of things that this printer can do. And here we have the printer in its natural form, in my opinion, with a box of printer paper connected to it via tractor feed. And here you see me rolling that tractor feed paper through the printer. I always loved how this worked. And here you can see the back of the printer, including the parallel connection and the very long tractor feed paper, which extends all the way to the floor, as you would expect, into the very nice box of tractor feed paper at the bottom there. So that begs the question, can you still buy paper for this printer? The answer is yes, and you can even get it delivered free in one to two days. <laughs> anyway, Staples does carry it. And here we have the printer ready for single sheet mode. I'll go ahead and flip the switch here, and we'll do a little self-test. Have a listen. I took the output of the print job and scanned it in via my scanner so you can see what it looks like, nice and crisp. Next, I'm going to adjust the head adjust on the printer. This controls how close the printer head is to the paper, and you'll see that by adjusting this back, we get a little difference in quality. Once again, take a listen. And here you can see how significantly bad the quality is if you move the print head back. I presume this mode would be most useful if you were printing on perhaps a heavier cardstock or something to that effect. Here we have the top cover for the printer and putting this in place significantly quiets printing. Of course, today we'll show it with the cover removed for illustration purposes. And here we have a color kit. It's new old stock, a KX PCK 11. As we open it up, we can see a nice manual in here. It's very thorough. I loved manuals back in the day. They were so much better than today, but I digress. And we can go ahead and look at the components. First, we'll open this up here. This is a gear, I believe, for lowering and raising the ribbon to select the different colors. We'll see how that works. And also a nice sticker to say, this is now a color printer, which is kind of cool. And looking here, we have a motor for driving that cartridge and it basically connects into the existing infrastructure for the printer. That ribbon cable there will connect in to an existing slot. And the final item in the box is this ribbon. We will look at it later. It is completely disintegrated. So prior to installing the kit, we have that barren cavity on the bottom there. And after we install it, you see those green indicators there. 
and I'll go ahead and snap this into place and the kit is now installed for the most part. We just need to hook in the ribbon cable, which I'll do momentarily here and now we're all set. From there we can go ahead and put a ribbon in. So I'll move back the head adjustment to make it easier to put the ribbon in. Then I can struggle a bit to put this ribbon in and then we can move that head adjustment back forward again, though I didn't show that here. And now for a closer look at that color ribbon, here's one after it's done some printing. You can see a little bit of smudging on the different bands. I think there are ways to actually adjust things so that it doesn't quite mark up quite so much, but that's fine. Here's a new Panasonic ribbon, which I happen to purchase, and I purchase these in a lot. I don't know if it's any good, but I will say that some of these Panasonic ribbons do disintegrate over time. I'll show you an example here. So here's the ribbon that came with the color kit and the wheels that spin the ribbon around were completely disintegrated, which is unfortunate. However, tons of toner came to my rescue. This is an online site that sells compatible cartridges. Here you can see that on the box. And yes, you can still buy these in the year 2021 for about $32 a piece, which I was more than happy to pay. And we'll notice that they make a couple of guarantees. One, that this is recently manufactured and also that they actually custom manufacture these. How cool is that? Thank you, tons of toner. So here's the inside of a ribbon and you can see the wheels are in much better condition inside of this new cartridge that was recently manufactured. And it's also cool to see all of the ribbon spooled in there nice and neat. Looking at a black ribbon, you can see it's much smaller and we'll go ahead and spin that along because it's fun to see. And you can purchase these from Tons of Toner or from Amazon or different places. I happen to purchase a six pack off of Amazon for about $20. And this cartridge does seem to do the job. And I now have five more than I'll ever need. So installing it once again, I move that head adjust forward. We can put the cartridge into the printer and give a little turn there on the wheel. And then from there, as I should, move the head adjustment back. So comparing the cartridges side by side, we can definitely see a size difference. I'll go ahead and hold them up like this and you can see the color cartridge is, well, about four times bigger as you would expect since it has four color bands to it. The manual that came with this printer is both thorough and excellent. Look at this, this is a real manual. How cool is that? It's great to have it as a reference. That said, if you don't have it as a reference, you can still get it off of Panasonic's FTP site. And the manual has some really cool stuff in it. Here is a basic program that allows you to print an LQ font. I see a future video in the works showing how we can drive the printer from basic or other programs. It's going to be a fun one. So let's look at some of the printer settings. I'm going to start with load park. So when I press load park with paper loaded, you'll see it rolls back to the back of the printer. I press it again and the printer will load the paper. Next, we'll look at form feed, and form feed is going to be exactly what you would expect. If we hit form feed, we will get a piece of paper that feeds all the way out. Next up, we have tear off. This is a cool feature. When I press this button, it moves the paper up just enough above the top lid there so that we can tear it off. And then when we're done, we can push the button one more time and the paper will reset. I use this feature a lot. There are a variety of other features on the front panel related to font and pitch. And also this particular menu doubles as a configuration menu when we get into configuration mode. Here's the example here. The mode is called initial setup mode. And these are the different functions you can use. You'll notice that you can change from Epson to IBM compatibility, as well as make other changes, including language. Pretty cool. Over here on the right, we have other buttons like super quiet, don't believe it the online button, and also the line feed and the function button. The line feed button will certainly feed the paper one line at a time, and the function button is used for providing a variety of different functions. Next, we're gonna look at a variety of programs, and we're going to start with Harvard Graphics 3. So you can see me going down to the setup portion of Harvard Graphics 3, and we're gonna go over to printers. And you will see that I configured this for an Epson LQ printer. There were no Panasonic color printers available in Harvard Graphics. Thankfully though, this printer is compatible with Epson LQ printers, specifically the 860, but this driver actually worked just perfect for this printer. From there, we can go ahead and open a chart. I'll open one that I used in a past December video that you see here, and we can go ahead and print this out. So we'll go to output and printer one, 
and I'll bump up the quality and let's take a listen. Here's the output. It wasn't particularly great. I think that I need to make some adjustments for how that color head is aligned. And yes, indeed, it is adjustable, but you get the general idea, if anything else. Next up, let's try Print Shop Deluxe under Windows 3.1. I'm just gonna print out a simple sign with a confetti background. We'll keep it really simple. Let's see how this turns out. If I do say so myself, I think the quality of this was a little bit better. So I was happy to see that. This looks really good. Next, we're going to launch a classic word processor, WordPerfect 5.1. And what we'll do here is a variety of fonts and maybe a graphic. So I'll start out with the default font here and we'll just type, this is a test of printing to the dot matrix printer. And then from there, we can go up to the fonts menu since I can't remember the function keys and change the base font We'll change it to something else. How about Roman? So now we can go ahead and do some typing in Roman, and these are built-in fonts for the printer. From there, we can have a look and see what this will generally look like on output. And let's go ahead and choose a third font. Let's go with Sans Serif. So we'll go ahead and do some typing with that. Let's choose a fourth font just for good. How about Prestige Italic? And you can see that WordPerfect puts a border around that because it is italic. Let's insert a $10 bill graphic. So we'll put that in there and we can go and see what things look like. And I'll go ahead and send this to the printer so we can see what we end up getting. And here's the printout. It looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Gotta love that 360 by 360 DPI output. Not bad at all. Next up, let's print a banner. And I'm loading this under Windows 95 because the Windows 3.1 print drivers don't detect continuous feed for this printer. So we'll print out a little mini banana split here, just two pages. Hi all, that's good text. And from there we can print this and let it go. It takes about a half an hour to print. We won't wait for it though, because we have better things to do. But in any event, I'm checking the color settings, the DPI settings, and we're gonna let her go. And here we see the final output. I feel like the printer got a little tired or maybe the ribbon got worn out. I have been printing a lot, but in any event, it doesn't look too terrible. I would like that all text to be a little more black, but it is what it is, we'll take it. All right, well that's what I had for you today. I really enjoyed getting to learn more about this printer and trying different things out. It's so cool to have a dot matrix printer again even if they are a little bit loud. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, and please do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And comment below if you have any feedback or questions or comments about a printer like this. Did you have one in your childhood? Comment below, I'd love to know. In all cases, it's been great having you along for the retro journey, and I look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, bye for now.